We're told the Hemming family is considering legal action to try to keep the city from changing the name of Hemming Park. Last night, the city council voted 16 to 2 to rename the park for local civil rights icon James Weldon Johnson. Today, the Hemmings, as the Hemmings looked at a potential court battle, others look back at what this downtown park used to represent. News for Jack's reporter Jim Pickett was there as voices rang out in celebration. You know, even for the 35 years that I've been here in town, Hemming Park has changed numerous times, and it's changing again. This one, historical. There are lots of memories here for some, both good and bad. They sang out proudly, lift every voice and sing, and they let it be known that Hemming Park will soon be called James Weldon Johnson Park, after the man who wrote the song that many say is the Black National Anthem. Today, while they sang in the background, Ben Frazier of the Northside Coalition walked around the park with me. He remembers coming here as a boy of 10 with his mom while the park was segregated. It still has some of his happiest memories as a kid. I remember standing right in front of that building, which is where Morrison's cafeteria used to be. Black folks could work there, but they couldn't sit down and eat there. I remember the Klan coming by during a demonstration and seeing them in their regalia and being afraid and telling my mama that I was afraid. And she said, Benny, don't worry. They ain't gonna bother nobody. But Frazier says there were unspoken rules at the park. This park played such a tremendous part in all of our lives. On the west side of the park was the colored people's side. To my right and to the east was the white people's side. Within the confines of this park, there were white and colored water fountains white and colored restrooms. The name change just didn't happen. Frazier says it was a result of the movement Take em Down Jacks, the effort to get rid of the Confederate monuments, which we saw play out when the Confederate soldier, which overlooked the park, came down in June. And then the protests that occurred at the end of May. You know, after all of the fights, after all of the protests, after what happened just last week, are you surprised that it happened? I'm not just surprised that it happened. The question is, why didn't it happen sooner? Of course, not everybody is happy with this chain of events. In fact, this morning I talked to Elwood Hemming. He is the great, great, great nephew of Charles Hemming, who the park was named for. What's next for you? Um, right now I am working with some attorneys to see what kind of stop we can put onto this. The Hemings have never owned a slave, had absolutely nothing to do with slavery, um, and now they're trying to clue kind of put it all together with the whole Confederate stuff and want to basically disregard any of the past and wipe it out. It's not the fact that they changed the name, it's who they changed it to, and the fact that they did not keep the living relatives informed of anything that was going on. It was all done behind everybody's back, behind closed doors. Mayor Curry has yet to sign this legislation, but he plans to do so. That would officially change the name of the park. Jim Pickett, Channel 4, The Local Station.